Hey, what's up everyone? So about a year ago, I started making some videos called Funko Pops that will explode in value. A little clickbaity, but the focus was recommending pops to you that were still available at retail that I felt were gonna go up in value in the near future. So you don't miss out, or if you want, you can call it Funko Pop investing or Funko Pop speculation. And I thought it would be fun to go back, now that it's been a year since the first one, nine months since the last one, to see how my recommendations are doing in the aftermarket. Now I don't make videos like this anymore for a number of reasons. And I made a video explaining that. It's called the Collectibles Investing Advice Paradox. I'll link it below if you're curious about that. But let's have a little fun seeing if I was right or wrong. For pricing, I'm not gonna look at Pop Price Guide because that's wildly inconsistent and doesn't really match up with the aftermarkets. I'm gonna look more at eBay. I find that to be the most accurate and the place where you can see actual pictures of the pop you're gonna buy, and you can filter it by lowest to highest price-wise, and usually get the best price. Places like Whatnot, Mercari, the websites are a little annoying to use, plus the prices tend to be a little inflated. And just for fun, I'll also look at Amazon, just because it's the biggest online marketplace, right? And it's a lot of people's go-to to buy anything online, even Funko Pops. Even though if you care about condition, it's one of the worst places to buy Funko Pops, but sometimes they're cheaper, sometimes they're way more expensive. It just depends. But for the actual price of a mint pop, eBay will be the focus. And Funko actually announced eBay will be the preferred aftermarket for Funko products, whatever that means. Like I said before, all of my recommendations were made to you where you could still find each and every one of these pops at retail price, in-store or online. And the first one I recommended was Haruko from FLCL. And the cheapest one I can find on eBay is $35 shipped. There's a couple that are cheaper, but their boxes are pretty trashed. Remember that I am taking box condition into consideration because we're looking at value from a collector standpoint and also from an investing standpoint. Box condition matters. And on Amazon, you can find Haruko for $25.58 shipped, but it's just a stock image. You don't see the actual pop you're gonna get. And this is on sale from $29.40. Not sure how long the sale lasts or whatever. But if you want to pay 10 bucks less, go with Amazon and risk it. Or if you want to mint one, eBay for $35. Now let's see what the percentage increase is. I'm just going to use $15 as a retail price starting point because it does vary from retailers. It could be 10 bucks online, but you still have to pay for the shipping depending on how many pops you buy, right? And if you buy it in store, you still got to drive there and spend some time. So we'll just call it $15 even though you can find it for maybe $12.50 or $13 or $14 or whatever. And if you were to buy it on Amazon, a 66.6% .6 increase. And Taruko on eBay, a 133.33% increase. The second one I recommended was Conti from FLCL, and he's had a very similar trajectory. Cheapest one on eBay in a decent box is $35. And on Amazon, stock photo, gambling on condition, $22. And the percentage increase or return on investment, if you want to call it that, would be 133.33% on eBay or 46.67% on Amazon. The last one from this first video was Asuka from Evangelion. Now keep in mind that I'm still going to leave it at 15 base price for these retail pops, but I remember at the time getting this one for less than 10. And a lot of these pops were available at hot cash time or on clearance but I'm still gonna call it 15 because not everybody can find those deals, right? The cheapest you can find Asuka on eBay in an acceptable condition is $51 shipped. And on Amazon, you can find her for $39 shipped. Again, stock photo, it says it's bundled with a pop protector. Not sure if they put it inside the pop protector or not, or if they're just gonna throw it in a box unprotected like Amazon usually does. The percentage increase on eBay is 240%. And on Amazon, it's 160%. In the second video, I recommended Tupac, Easy e and Ice Cube. Now, Tupac and Ice Cube are still available at retail for around 15 bucks. I still feel that Tupac, though, will be popular once it's harder to get. Easy e has gone up a little bit, though. On eBay, the cheapest you can get it in good shape is $25. And on Amazon, $26. The percentage increase for Easy e on eBay is 66.67% and 73.33% on Amazon. 
First pop I recommended in the third video was the Dale Earnhardt Funko Pop Ride, which was a Walmart exclusive, and at the time it could be had for about $20, and the cheapest I could find it on eBay in good condition is about $37 and $67 on Amazon. The percentage increase on eBay is about 85%, and on Amazon, it's 235%. I also recommended the Glow in the Dark Sisu from Raya and the Last Dragon, and on eBay, she's $19.50 for one in good condition, and on Amazon, the special edition sticker, because this was a Walmart exclusive, is about $38. The percentage increase on eBay is only 30%, and on Amazon, the special edition sticker, the increase is 153.33%. And the last ones I recommended in this video are the Team USA Hello Kitty ones. I did mention this was very speculative, and these all can be had at retail price still, even though I'm pretty sure they're not going to make more. But this last Olympics wasn't very memorable, but who knows how these will be doing a year from now, or even by the time the next Olympics rolls by. But that is a long time to hold on to something if you intend to resell it. If you're just collecting them and you love them, that's a different story. But these don't appear like they will be moving too much. In the fourth video, I started with Han Solo in Carbonite, and he's still pretty much retail. About 16 to 17 shipped because I feel Funko has restocked to this one. But there are two different boxes to this one with the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. One with it on top, one with it on the side. If, or more like when, Funko restocks this one, it'd be interesting to see where the actual logo ends up because one printing might be more rare than the other. Elfano from Pan's Labyrinth has also slightly gone up about 25% if you want to get a mint condition one because this one is a little harder to find without box damage, but you can still find it for around 20 bucks. Now Jaws from the 007 line is a little bit of a different story. I remember getting this one for very cheap. He was on clearance for quite a while and on eBay, he's actually kind of hard to find shipped out of the United States. So whenever you order internationally, your package could be opened up by customs and they will ruin your pop. It's got a long way to travel. So even if they don't open it, it could still be ruined if it's not packed right. Shipping is ridiculously expensive, but I was able to find one on eBay for around $29 shipped, but the box isn't mint, but acceptable. And on Amazon, about $39. So on eBay, that's a 93.33% increase if you would have bought him for 15 and 160% increase if you buy him on Amazon. I also recommended the Golden Girl from the 007 line. And this one at the time could easily be had for under $10. But now if you want one in really good shape off of eBay, it's more like 20 and on Amazon, 22. So nothing too crazy, only about a 25% increase. Next, I recommended Tom Araya and Jeff Hanneman of Slayer because they were both still available for retail price, even though Kerry King had already shot up to around 60 bucks at the time. But for some reason, Tom Araya and Jeff Hanneman, either they made more of them or people were just buying Kerry King. But on Amazon, you can get Tom Araya for about $33 and on eBay for a good one with no box damage, about $40. And that is 166.67% increase on eBay and 120% increase on Amazon. And for Jeff Hanneman, you can still find him for about $20 with pictures of all sides of the box so you can see what you're getting or a little lower for about 17 for one being sold with a stock photo. And then the condition is random. And on Amazon, he's 24. From Suicide Squad 2, I recommended King Shark, Ratcatcher 2, and Polka Dot Man. And King Shark did shoot up to around $40 to $45 for quite a while until they announced a metallic variant and kind of killed the value for both of them because the metallic variant was available to pre-order for months and months and months. So all the demand was satisfied. And Ratcatcher 2 and Polka Dot Man are still available for retail. At the time, I felt like those characters wouldn't be made again as Funko Pops, which I still believe. I don't think they're ever going to make another Polka Dot Man or Ratcatcher 2. I mean... Maybe for a con, an unmasked one, but I don't know how popular the Suicide Squad was. I think so many people hated the first one that they never gave the second one a chance, even though it is one of the better comic book movies. And Funko may have just made a lot of the pops. So these ones, similar to the Hello Kitty ones, might not ever go up in value. Maybe in several years, 
which again, isn't that long for collectibles, but it is a long time if you're looking to like invest, right? You don't want to have your money tied up for years and years and years for only a slight return. I was a little bit more on the mark with Shinji of Evangelion. You could find them below retail at the time, but now on eBay for a good one, you're going to pay about $52 and on Amazon about 40. That's a 246% increase on eBay and 166.67% on Amazon. And the last one I recommended was Ray, also of Evangelion. And on eBay for a decent one, you're going to pay about $41 and about $25 on Amazon. That's a 173.33% increase on eBay and a 66.67% increase on Amazon. Now, a few things to keep in mind about some of these that have increased is that there's not a lot of them out there. And as more and more start to sell, the rarer they become and the higher they'll go. Like the Evangelion ones and the FLCL ones, I wouldn't be surprised if they one day reach the level of some of the Cowboy Bebop pops, where you're gonna shell out like 450 bucks to get a set, like a mint set. Am I saying that's gonna happen for sure? No, but there's just not a lot of them. But then again, if the price goes up, there'll be more people willing to part with them at say, $60. So maybe the supply will go up again, but so will the price. And since these were all available at retail, it's not like any of them have gone down. They're just very hard to sell. A $100 pop is easier to sell than a $10 pop, believe it or not. And I actually don't even recommend buying Funko Pop from anything too popular nowadays because Funko tends to make a lot of them. Like the Han Solo and Carbonite, for instance. If that was released, say, four or five years ago, Funko may have made 10,000, 15,000, 25,000 of them, maybe even 50,000 of them. And that's about it. But who knows how many they make now? Obviously way more. So it's always going to be risky buying things from licenses that are kind of evergreen, right? That Funko has for years and years and years. Like Funko has been able to make Star Wars pops for a long time. And they'll continue to make Star Wars pops for a long time. That's why Star Wars is so hit and miss for which ones actually will go up in value. Unless it's something kind of niche within the license, like say, Star Wars Rebels. Once the show ended, it's very unlikely for Funko to keep making Star Wars Rebels. But something like Empire Strikes Back is already 40 years old, right? The popularity of that movie isn't based on current momentum. That's just Star Wars. And maybe that might happen with say, like the Bad Batch Pops. Maybe a year or two from now, still retail, but Funko will eventually stop making those. And those might be more likely to gain in value than say another Han Solo or another Leia. It's tricky, but if you buy pops at the lowest possible price, it's hard to make a mistake. It's a different story when you're buying things for like 70, 80, 100, 200, and expecting them to maybe go up to 500 one day. That could happen. And if you're educated about your guesses, it might work out. But also remember that the price gets that high because there's a lot of demand. And when Funko sees a lot of demand, it's more likely for them to make a new version of that pop. So the risk is a lot higher. There's been plenty of pops that have shot up to like $400, and then Funko makes a new version or another run of the exact same pop, and it crashes down to $20. Now you're in a pretty big hole if you're looking at it through a financial lens.